Hello, everybody. Good evening. Rose here. So today I'm reacting to Foodie Beauty's live stream called Moving is Stressful. I was actually waiting for the chat portion of this live stream to show up because when you do a live stream, especially a long one, it does take a while for the chat part of the live stream to appear. So I was waiting for that. I had my dinner and I relaxed for a minute so I could sit down and spend time with all of you. So Foodie is talking about moving. And there's a couple of things I wanted to show you alongside that. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. Uh, one second, please. Here we go. So there's Foodie. And after I'm done doing all of my reacts for the day, I think I will just relax with doing some gaming, maybe making an ambiance video or two, because that's how I like to relax by, you know, playing video games and doing the ambiance stuff. And for anybody who comes here for the Foodie Beauty Reacts, if you're someone and you're not really an ambiance video fan, that's perfectly fine. I understand you're here for Foodie only. Just understand that it's something that I do for myself and for some people on my channel that they like to relax watching Foodie because their content is stressful and negative. It's just kind of a palate cleanser. If you want to watch those videos, you can. If not, you want to wait for the foodie stuff. I understand that too. So let's get on to Miss Foodie. So there's her live stream. I would like to show this to you. This is from the same live stream, courtesy of Barbecue Chicken. So here is a piece of the stream that I'm going to react to. I like to jump around a lot. So I don't know if we're going to catch this part. So we might as well just watch this now so barbecue chicken posted this on twitter i'm not purposely trying to lie to you guys about where i'm moving it's just that i want to keep it secret because preferably i don't want to be doxxed mostly just because i don't want people to fuck with me but um no it's i basically know somebody Who's doing me a favor, sort of. Like, yeah. I got hookups, basically, is what I'm saying. You know, there's a rumor going around that Foodie's family are the hookups, that maybe her mom or somebody connected to her family was the one that hooked her up with the house. And it would make sense if they did, because in order to get into a house, you have to have pretty decent credit, which Foodie doesn't have that. And she's thousands of dollars in debt with the government because she hasn't paid her taxes. So how can someone like Foodie Beauty who has terrible credit and owes so much money get into a house? You know, she's doing the same thing I think that she did when she got into the villa. When she moved into the villa, the way they got into that villa was Pizza's credit was used. His name was on the lease, not Foodie's. And in all the time that she's been at the villa, she's never taken steps to correct her credit, to put anything in savings, nothing. So it would seem that somebody has come forward and they've helped her get the house. And it might be a family member. So it made the it made the move easier on me. Can I just say something, Foodie? Look, I don't know what you're doing these days, but you look like you're tweaking bad. You're sitting there rubbing at your nose. You look horrible. What are you doing? If you're over there, crying broke one minute selling off your TV, and the next minute you're over there buying a new phone, talking about a house, you know, something don't smell right. You know, something doesn't smell right. But let me tell you something. If you're hurting for cash, the last thing you should be doing is doing drugs, okay? Doing the cola or something similar to the cola. Tony's place is <laughs> Actually, no, Aisha, it's not Tony either. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, I'm a hundred million percent not moving to Montreal. So that's, I know you guys are going to think like I'm not. 
That I can promise. I'm not moving to Montreal. So. <clears throat> you know, look at her. Look at her in, just in this clip. She's, girl, what are you doing? She is just like wired. Playing with her nose, picking her nose, all that foodie. You need to cut it out. But. Look. So that's all I can say beyond that. So that's the clip. So. She is saying now that she's got the hookup somewhere, that somebody's helping her move. I think it's a family member. It could be her mom, it could be somebody else, but I knew that Foodie would not be able to get a place on her own. There was no way. And maybe if her family is helping her out, they're doing it because they don't want Foodie in their house. They don't want her camped out in their place, making it a mess, causing chaos. So I'm sure they thought it was easier just to help her get into a place that way. If something happened, she's not going to be in their places, their homes, uh, making chaos. So there's that clip. Okay, as far as the place itself, what it looks like. So people have been telling me all morning that pictures of the house were circulating on Twitter, although I couldn't find it. But this person, Unexpected Dong, I guess this is a picture of the place and it would match up because Foodie was saying that it was fully furnished. So this is a picture of the inside of the place. Although I, I got a couple of things to say about this home. All right. So y'all take a good look at this home. This is not me being rude. That furniture does not look strong enough to withstand Foodie. It doesn't look like sturdy furniture. It looks like furniture that can get easily ruined if it were even lightly abused. We've seen how Foodie sits down on couches and chairs. She sits down with so much force, so much pressure. That furniture doesn't look sturdy. If that's the actual furniture, if that's the actual house, that looks like furniture you have to take care of. You know, that leather couch she had, you know, I'm sure it's completely ruined. You know, she would spill stuff on it. She would shat her pants on the couch. This looks like a couch that if you put anything on it, it's going to stain. And if she sits down hard on it, just flopping her weight into it, it's going to break. So this furniture looks like it's going to get ruined within no time. So let's go on to her actual live stream where she's talking to everybody. So let's get to, let's get to, shall we? I didn't wash my face yet. I just friggin, uh, you know. Hey, Karen. Oh, no, the queen. Fuck. I wanted to watch the funeral, and I don't have a TV anymore. Countable Beauty was right. Well, you shouldn't have traded that TV for groceries for Natter. That's what should have happened. He's an abusive person. What are you doing being concerned over his food? Son of a bitch. Sorry to say that. Gay girl. I guess you guys are just going to have to see where I'm moving. Why are you guys fucking doxing me right off the bat? Hi, Rebe. Oh, it just finished? Okay, that's an early funeral. If I have a funeral, I want it at night. No, I didn't see that. B.I. Peasant. Come watch on your phone, yeah. It's been on for hours. Don't let them dox you. April dawn time zones. True. Time zones are bullshit. We should all. So Spanky Jackson says, Pete's exposed you for leaving next week. You're going to leave that place a pit. And I'm calling the landlord. So Foodie keeps saying that they're leaving in a couple of months. Pete said they leave in a week. Now, Pete's, he's a bit of an idiot and he's a jerk, but sometimes you get nuggets of truth out of Pete's. 
I don't know why Foodie is going with this narrative of we're going to move out in a couple of months if a roommate comes out and says we're going to be gone in a week. But I guess it's one of those things we'll just wait and see and see what happens. All have the same time zone. So everyone can all enjoy each other's company in the same in the whole world. What do you think? No? Okay. Now, let me tell you something else. I'm using my new phone here to, to use for my my recording and my live streaming. So this will be my oh excuse me. Oh shit. What is this? They're going to try to have our place ready as soon as possible. Okay, I'm confused. You guys just saw the picture. It looks, it's. she said it's fully furnished. So if the place is fully furnished, how is it not ready? Does that make sense to anybody? If we're talking about a house or an apartment that's fully furnished, that means it's ready to go. So. What's stopping you, foodie? My last month here is paid for, so there's not really any rush for me to get into the new place or like really right away. You know, like that's how it works here. So you give your two months notice when you want to move, and he said next week, and he's not right. But why would he say that then? Why would hold on a second? Why would Pete? say that you're moving next week if you aren't moving next week why would that come out of his mouth why would i lie about when i'm moving i mean who cares about that like it doesn't matter when i'm moving you know <laughs> you lie about everything else but i decided on a place that i think is the best for us both right now and um i'm also going by like whenever i check out a place i check out how it makes me feel like does the place have good vibes does it have ghost vibes does it have like people committed suicide here vibes does it have like why are you concerned about vibes of a house when you're bringing a whole bunch of negativity with you girl it doesn't matter if the place has good vibes you'll bring the bad energy the moment you move in you know, were people frying bacon at midnight in the kitchen here? F fucking vibes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> I hope you're moving soon. Why wouldn't he know what's going on? Are you? <clears throat> because he doesn't. Okay. When does Pete's ever pay attention? Hey, Meg! To anything that's going on uh, about that. Do a GoFundMe for Pete's. He needs a bodyguard. What? Nobody better call her new place. Okay, I want to clean everything. But are you going to? Is that the queen flop era? Country girl. Hey, golden girl. Okay, sorry. My chat wasn't updating. I never peace. Is she frozen for everyone? I was frozen for a minute there. Are you guys back? The new villa is a townhouse. If the doxers are right, it is a bit west of Montreal proper. Hey, Meg. Hey, Kaylee. Yay, thanks for being here, guys. I get I get a little bit of a vibe that people are starting to feel like they're not appreciated. You think so? You think so? All those times that you yelled and screamed at your VIBs and threatened to block them and who wants to be blocked and going on blocking sprees and setting up a postcard club that you've never sent one single postcard on and had people sign up for an OnlyFans you barely posted any content on. Do you really start to get the vibe that they don't feel appreciated? It's just starting to filter through there. And I mean, I literally talk to every single one of you, no, you at don't. least a few times every chat. 
No, you don't. Sand toddler. Trina. No, I'm going to donate, get rid of. I okay, so Size Queen asked the question, why isn't your HelloFresh being delivered? We all know you wouldn't cancel it. I can answer that one. I think I know the answer to that one. I can't confirm, but I got an idea. If she has a debit or a credit card or a bank account or something as the payment method and there's no money in the account or the uh, card has been canceled, that's why it wouldn't be delivered. That's why. Because she's got a debit card or a credit card that has gone into collections or it's overcharged. That's why. <clears throat> because they can't get payment off of that card or that account. So there's your answer. I have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna get on it today. Oh my God, I have so much to do. We should do that today. I should just put the camera up. Oh my God. Laz? You've noticed a difference? What did I say and what? Address the Starbucks lady. <laughs> What's BS, yeah. Penny? Hi, Trixie. Come fondue. I feel very appreciated by other regulars as well. Yeah. I'm nicer. I'm on my meds now, Jamie Carpenter. It makes a really huge effing difference for me. If not, I'm pretty much psychotic. And it's not that I don't want to take accountability and, like, blame everything on mental illness, but it really, like, I don't even notice how I act sometimes to, like, way after the fact. Like, people will be like, oh, you you acted this way, and it's like... So, question, Foodie, how are you getting medication if you've not been to the doctor in the longest for a script? Because even if you're on regular medication, the doctor wants to see you on the regular to keep that script filled. You haven't been to the doctor in a while. So where are you getting this medication? Really? Like, wow. You know, or if I watch my streams, like, I should retro react to myself. Because sometimes I don't even realize, like, how I act sometimes. And then, like, just watching snippets of, like, other reaction videos, I realize a lot of things are fucking made up or exaggerated. That's what pisses me off is that like, like if you don't, if you're not going to like me for a legit reason, okay, but like not for like, I hate. And that's why she got the second phone so that Natter could call her and contact her and she wouldn't get busted. Because who else would be calling Chantal? She doesn't have any friends that she hangs out with. Who else would be calling her right now except Natter? Probably calling her and saying, where's my thumbnail? <laughs> where's my groceries? Where's my thumbnail? <laughs> These people calling me on Messenger all the fucking day. Oh, my God. Okay, I got to block that. It's first matter. I just, like, accept everybody. Well, that's your idiot mistake. If you're accepting friend requests from strange guys you don't know, they want to see a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you're the girl that will give it to them. Of course they're going to call you. One minute. Block. Thank you. If you call me after I hang up on you, right again after, that's a red flag for me, and I'm blocking you. Because that's so fucking weird. Ugh, I hate that shit. Retro react to last winter. Honestly, I know people like it's actually like traumatizing to like. Oh, shut up. I'm sick of her saying that. It's so traumatizing. Oh, please. It's so traumatizing. And yet you'll talk about Natter. You'll watch his streams. You will send him messages on fake accounts on Facebook. How traumatized are you, ma'am? Watch myself. It puts me in such a bad space. It's like watching barbecue chickens video. It just put me in a space I didn't think it would. You know? Anyway. Um, 
I stopped dealing with CJ RSN, not because he called me out, but because he's believing shit that's not even true. Like, or I hate, I, I used to think I liked his interview style. Oh, there we go. So VIB peasant cheeseburger points something out saying, who has your new number? Only people you know. Yes, didn't she get a new number? And we know her family doesn't stay in contact with Chantal. They barely speak to her. So who else could be calling her if she has a new number? Well, but now it's like, it's annoying. He repeats himself over and over. So, so, okay. So, and then he like goes with what the audience, like if the audience wants you to roast somebody. Okay. Then, you know, or like, I don't know. He's just, he's just annoying as fuck. So I don't deal with him anymore. Um, who else don't I deal with anymore? He wanted to make you look bad, I feel. Yeah, like for views, I don't know. We know, we, why are you lying? You're still talking to Natter. No, I'm not. Like he'll- Yes, you are. Girl, you got exposed. Melissa Cook. You're still talking to Natter, and Natter is still talking to you because he didn't block your messages. And you want to know why he didn't block your messages? Honest opinion. I think the two of you set that up. I think him exposing your messages, that was pre-planned. That was a setup. You messaged him so that he could turn around and use it for content, use it for drama, which then you could talk about and rage about. It was a complete setup. It just seemed too convenient. We'll take things out of context. Like, oh my God. Me sending a message to fucking ream his ass out. Or at the time he'll ask me, are you- Wait, wait, wait. No, ma'am. You did not send one message and go off and cut it off. No, you kept calling. You kept sending messages. That's what you did. And he kept accepting them. So you both look suspicious to me. Are you talking to Nader at the time? No. And then he'll ask me way like fucking months later when things are different. Why are you lying? Why are you lying? Like, he's just weird. I don't know. No, not MFW, just CJ. Address BBJ and Sam having more info about the move than P. <laughs> I don't know. They talk like they know exactly what's going on. Exactly. And it was super emo. <laughs> the video. Yeah, Barbecue Chicken's video was super emo and the music didn't help. And the, and the uh, I've been through it. Woe is me. Look, whenever I cry about my situations, it's not for pity. It's just no, it's not for pity, it's for money. Look, Chantal, listen. <clears throat> I have sat here in my chair reacting to you, watching your videos, watching your live streams. I've sat here and watched you. One minute you'll be raging, and then seconds later you'll be giggling. And the next minute after that be crying. And I've also sat here and watched you. Like you'll sit there and cry for just a minute and then look at the chat like, are they watching me? Is there a lot of people in here? Let me turn on the waterworks again. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You know, I've, I've watched you do it. You don't come on camera and genuinely cry. You fake cry. Just like you come on camera and pretend to be a victim and claim to be a victim. You turn on whatever emotion you think you need to get people to give you money. I don't come on here for pity. The hell you do. You know you do. You come on camera for sympathy because sympathy for you equals money. Pity equals money. Trauma equals money. Self-harm content equals money. It's all about Everything leading to your bank account. I don't come on here for pity. You shouldn't be coming on here at all and stressing people out by filling their ears with a bunch of verbal garbage.
emotional traumatic diarrhea. Shouldn't be doing that. If you've got issues, you should take them to a person that can help you. Not dumping them on people day after day that can't help you. They don't have the tools to help you. They don't have the right education to help you. And when I say that, I'm not saying people in the audience are stupid. I'm saying that there are people that go to college and they're trained to help other people with mental issues. They have the training, they have the certification. Those people can help the most. All that anybody in your chat can do is listen to you vent and maybe give you a little bit of good advice. But even those people, you don't listen to them. You don't want any help. See, that's the thing that a lot of you VIBers, you're not getting through your head. There are some people in this world that even though it may be beyond all of us, there are some people in the world that they are in pain and they like it. They like being in pain or giving the appearance that they are in pain. Why? Because they want to be the center of attention. They get attention by appearing to be in pain. And they honestly do not want help to get better in whatever way they need to get better. I, I compare it to this. I compare it to a cruise ship and you got somebody who jumps in the water and they're splashing around the water saying, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And then you got other people on the boat saying, here, here's a life raft, here, here's a life preserver, put that on. And the person in the water is saying, no, no, it's okay, I'm fine. And continuing to splash around so that everybody on the boat is paying attention to them. That's Chantal. There are people on the boat saying, here, we want to give you some help. And her saying, "Real, I don't want help. I just want your attention. That's her. Just a fucking, I'm a fucking human being, man. And I just want to talk about what I'm going through with my channel. You know, and I want to talk about that too. Like, I basically just want to use my channel to talk about whatever I want, you know? Well, we're tired of hearing about you talk about whatever you want. Okay? Listen, you're coming on YouTube to make money, true? This is your entire income. Aren't you concerned? about when and if the audience is going to get so bored they don't watch you anymore since this is your entire income you should care more about the satisfaction of the people i'm not saying be a complete fake and just cater to the people's wants you should come on your channel and be yourself but that's the problem you're not coming on camera and being yourself you are being a caricature of yourself an over exaggerated version of yourself that's what you're doing you've tailored your content to cater to different fetish groups out there those that are into exhibitionism because you sit there you flash your body all the time you're trying to cater to those who do drugs you cater to the feeders with your binge eating you're catering to all that so focused on catering to the fetish niches of people because those people that are into those niches, those fetishes, whatever it is you're doing that's destructive for you, that's their fetish and that's their entertainment and they're not gonna stop you from doing those things. You don't want real people in your audience to say, hey, what you're doing is harmful, stop it. No, you want a whole bunch of people that support you in whatever you do, even if what you do is hurting you you don't want anybody to come forward and say hey this isn't cool stop it you want people to be completely supportive of you in every way and that includes financially as well but the you that we're seeing now in 2022 did not exist four or five years ago didn't exist you want proof give me a second i'm going to play this and i'm going to bring up one of chantal's earlier videos you know what Y'all give me a second. Let me look it up real quick. We're going to do this. I'm going to show you who Chantal was like four or five years ago. And you guys can see the difference for yourselves. Because it's about time we went back in time, isn't it? I think so. 
see how she's changed, how she's catered her content to just money. Okay, just money. Let's see, uh, four or five years ago, that would be, let me just see here. I'm looking for a good video here. I'm just going to pull what I'm All right. Let me just copy and paste this link. Y'all give me a second. This is what we're doing. This is on her channel now. Okay, there's her little intro. All right, let me go back. There we go. This is from like 2016. Okay. This is the Chantal of 2016. This is the beginning of her channel. I was able to salvage. Is that the word to use? I don't know. Save. Let's just use save. Don't play with big words unless you know what you're doing. Uh, the footage for my DIY, so I'm going to try to put that video out. It's I really suck at DIY, so don't expect anything from me. Okay, thanks. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is kind of lazy. Oh, the main reason I want to do this, though, is to tell you guys a story. It's a fart story. And you know how I do. You know how I do. Anytime I hear someone fart, in public, I need to tell you. Well, it's not really technical. The cat just jumped out of the wall. Sam, anyway, I'm in the hall and the, you can hear things in the hall. If you stand in the hall and listen, you'll help hear people in their apartments, which scares me because I'm sure people- So you guys already see a difference in the Chantal then versus now. She's talking in a softer tone. She's not shrieking. She's not being obnoxious compared to, compared to, hold on a second, compared to her. This is the Chantal after she got monetized and she got obsessed with money. And when she got that money, she was able to indulge in all of her impulses, addictions, and obsessions. This is what happens when you got too much money and not enough sense. And you're like a teenager with mom and dad's credit card. And you can run around and just go nuts with it. This is what she's essentially been doing the last few years. Just indulging in all of her complete impulses that make no sense. You used to be this, Chantal. You used to act more normal. And you used to have a relationship with Bibi. You had a nice home. You lived in BB's home. Th this is the Chantal right here that everybody liked because you were relatable here. You were likable here. And then you became this. Because you decided to take the path of being the most hated, despised person on YouTube. And you did that by your behavior, the things you said, the things you did. You're always saying that the reaction channels are shaming you because of your weight. No. No, it's not your weight. You could be 600 pounds and fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Carry yourself like a queen, but you don't. You carry yourself like a clown. You act like a clown, a very angry clown, an obnoxious, offensive, vulgar clown. That's what people have a problem with. Not your weight. Your weight is your business. It's your personality. It's how you treat people, it's how you talk to people. And you decided to amp that up and make this your content on YouTube. And now because you did that, you backed yourself into a corner where you feel like you have to stick the same old routine. Because if you do, if you change it up, maybe you'll lose your audience. Here's a thought, if you change up your routine, you might get a better audience a bigger audience you're getting what you're getting based on your behavior you can always switch it up but you never will because you are determined to do as little as possible and get paid for it 
the Chantal we see today is not the one from like four or five years ago. They're completely different people now. And I, I, I don't find that fair. Like I find my community posts about the stream sniping. I don't find that fair. And I don't find it fair that people will be like, well, I'm still not going to give you a view. So why are you even watching me at all then? If you really, my seatbelt's twisted. It's bugging me. If you don't even like me and you have to scour the internet to still keep up with me, why are you, like people don't get that. Or you don't have to like me to give me a view, like to watch me. You can totally hate watch me. Like I don't understand. So, <laughs> so what you're saying is you don't have to go the reaction channels. You can be subscribed to my channel and hate watch me. Oh, look at you trying to farm people onto your channel. Look at you, madam. Listen, people go to the reaction channels because they don't like you. They don't like who you are. And they're not going to give financial support. They're not going to become an enabler like your VIBs are. They are your enablers. And they can come over here and hiss and boo at me and throw tomatoes all they want. But the fact remains they are enablers. When you're someone, whether you're online or not, and you give money to an addict, which you are, you're enabling them. You're enabling the addict. You are enabling the addictions. And you've got many addictions. You are addicted to attention. That's your number one addiction. Number one. Below that, you've got an addiction for drugs. You've got an addiction for food, which is a drug for you. Food is your drug. It's one of your drugs. You've got an addiction for natter. You've got an addiction for shopping. Anything you like becomes an addiction and an obsession. It goes from liking something to a being addicted to something to being obsessed with something. That's just how you work. That's why you need therapy badly, badly. But anybody giving money to someone online or off that's an addict, I don't care if you like the addict. I don't care if you like their personality. You're still enabling the addict. You are enabling the addiction because you know the moment you give money to that person, you know what they're going to use it for and what they're going to do with it. And you're enabling it. You're enabling the self-harm full stop understand how people think like they don't want to give me a view as if they don't want to support me but they'll support a reaction channel who will say the even more vile things or have an audience who says more vile things about me i don't understand that like and why do you care stay in your lane do your content make your money don't pay attention to what the reaction channels have to say Nobody told you, you have to step outside your backyard and go into somebody else's and complain about it. If you don't like what the reaction channels are saying, don't go over there. Don't go to their channels. Don't go to their chats. Don't go on their Twitters. Don't go on their community posts. Just stay away. You do you on your channel and just mind your business. But I've done so bad things that people don't want to support me in any way. It's so weird. Okay. Whoa. I have so much change. <laughs> so this person, Meg. Jedi says you can't control what people choose to watch, unfortunately. There's no unfortunately about that, Meg. This is YouTube. This is the internet. People can go where they like. I mean, just think about it, Meg. Would you like someone to tell you where you can go online and what you can watch? No, I'm sure you wouldn't. So why is there an unfortunately? People can choose what they want to watch, what they want to be a part of. Everybody should have that freedom. You people in Chantal's chat, your VIBs, you can choose to watch her or not. You can choose to support her or not. So since you have the freedom, shouldn't everybody else have that same freedom? I think so. Hi. Hi. 
Yeah, 11.30 is your photo. How do you want to pay today? Gosh. I want your coffee today. <laughs> Lambo! <laughs> Canadian Eagle. <laughs> this is for the feeders. Hi, Chris Cross. Oh, yeah. So, Feeder Beauty says, at Foodie Beauty, all Lambo wanted was her coffee beans. She was crying last night on IG. She told me. You know, for those who don't remember, Chantal went to Cuba and she promised to send Lambo her Cuban coffee. And she never did. I think she actually used part of it for her coffee. But my question for Ashley is, you were expecting something from Chantal? You really thought she was going to send you something? You thought that was actually going to be a thing? That Chantal was going to roll her big butt out of bed and send stuff to the post office for you? Besides, the Cuban coffee thing, it's not a big deal. You can go to the grocery store and get Cuban coffees. Not that big of a deal. Your man hates you listening to you. How about what? You know who I don't like? Everybody. I'm okay. I don't know. I don't know who I don't like today. You like my hat? It's a peach. It's a pumpkin. She says, mmm. I never heard her say, mmm. I hate watching her eat. Stop eating on camera, please. Let's go see if we can see the fall colors yet. Oh my God, you're loud, obnoxious. <laughs> accountable beauty, excuse me, accountable beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. So I'm just seeing why Chantal's getting irked right now. She's saying, why don't you have any sympathy for FFG? Like, why doesn't she have any sympathy for Frenchie? Her pets just passed. Why don't you have any sympathy for Frenchie? Even if you hate her, have a little heart for someone who just lost their fur babies. All right, now let's go. Excuse me. You are vile and disgusting foodie beauty. You are. Instead of not watching me at all, they go and try to watch me somewhere else and skeeve me out of money. No. I don't think so. How about if you don't like me that much, you tell yourself that you're crazy because I'm awesome. And then <laughs> it's just a dirty move, you know? It's just a dirty move. Well, if you weren't so delete button happy, maybe people wouldn't stream snipe you. But whenever there's something interesting, you delete it because you don't want to get in trouble with YouTube. So leave your streams up. Maybe it will happen less. Uh-oh. I got to watch and be really adherent to traffic. Just kidding. I wonder where you are tonight. Oh, I mean, God. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like her eating, and I don't like her singing. I refuse to take part in that. No, I'm, no, no. They're basically, they know what I want to move by, but they, they want to um, get the place ready. So... If it's fully furnished, it's already ready. So what else do they need to prepare? It's a fully furnished place. You said so. Where's the picture again? There it is. There's the picture, courtesy of Unexpected Dawn. Thank you, Unexpected Dawn. 
there's a picture of the place, the alleged picture. Does it look like it's not ready? It looks ready to me. Am I missing something here? The place just won't be ready for me until until then either. So, And like I said, I don't have to pay the last month's rent. So why am I going to move in and, and waste this money? But that, I guess I just never, that, that wasn't always a concern for me, honestly. The main thing was the... It just being ready and me being ready i have like i have so much to do i have to figure out who i have to hire what i'm donating what i'm giving away what i'm sending away what and realistically it has to probably be as easy as possible for me because like i figure i don't know Like, am I realistically going to do all that? Am I going to, like, <laughs> sort everything? I'm not organized. I'm not very organized, you know? So, <laughs> Emerald Skies ASMR says, no one wants that crap. Toss it. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Nobody would want anything in her house because it is so disgusting. There's nothing in that house on tall that you could donate and it would be accepted. The clothes. When's the last time you washed your clothes? You think something like Goodwill or Salvation Army would take your clothes in the condition that are in? I don't think so. Even with, say, a thrift store like Goodwill or Salvation Army, the clothes have to be fairly clean before they put them out for sale. So you're going to donate your clothes to who? Who's going to take those filthy, smelly, nasty clothes that you refuse to wash? No one. So what else is left? The couch? You shat on the couch. Same thing with the bed. You threw up on the bed. Who wants that? Nobody. There's very little in that house that you could take with you. And if the place is fully furnished, as far as the furniture, where would it go? It's a fully furnished house. This latte tastes funny. Anyway, can't see any changing color leaves yet. It just depends like especially for my kind of audience i have a lot of silly audience members and i have a lot of like you know normal audience members people who actually are more like less silly who actually care you know what i mean and people who are here to just have fun so it's like it's hard for me i don't know like I, when you guys fight i don't want to take sides because like you know it's not my, my fucking beef it's not high school it's not it's not you know, if you have a personal beef with someone, that might happen. There's like hundreds of thousands. Oh, so I guess I missed something. Emerald Skies ASMR says, LOL. She said the Trinity is a hindrance. And the Trinity in her chat is Ashley, plain cheeseburger, and Sofa King. Imagine that her talking about that, her own mods that way. There's like at least like what? 900, maybe 500 at least. We'll say 500 people on a good day in the chat or whatever there's like you're bound to not get along with people so i mean you know and you know i know it's like beyond the more you react to it the more people are going to come after you that's i that's what happened with me this is probably why i have so many haters because i was so reactive for so long about it oh by the way guys you know why she likes taking these long drives? This is another technique to run up the meter to make her streams as long as possible. Because she can just sit there and drive and babble and, you know, the minutes are ticking away. And the longer the stream is, the more ads that Google AdSense can place on the live stream. That's why she does the long drive. That's why she likes it. 
and you know just block that person and don't engage that's the best thing you can do is is basically what it comes down to if you really don't want to engage if you keep arguing with with each other then you want to engage i mean you know about if you want to bees with me you can bees with me you can be here be a beezer and you know vicky you have your your friends in chat too just fucking block the ones you hate and fuck them and and same thing vice versa all of you are fucking welcome to be here as for moderators like that's like i'm basically giving control to my channel to pe people who are like in in essence yes you've been supportive of me but you guys are strangers and at the end of the day and the least amount of control over my channel i can give to someone else better for me and you know what even if you have mods chantal this is your channel this is your channel. This is your channel and, and you are the content creator. You know what that means? If you've got anybody in your chat, a mod, a viewer that they're acting up, you have the power to say, hey, cut it out. I'm taking your wrench or hey, cut it out or I'm blocking you. You can control the chat. You know, so, you know, I don't even really probably even need to have any moderators. Like, once in a while when I go on my tangents and I flip out, but. It's often. Awesome. And I change my mind about that a lot, too. Like, I will, you know, by any logic, like, I don't know. Where's your loyalty to PC? Vicky was attacking her last night, but all you care about. See, that's not true, Amanda. That's 100% false. PC is more than capable. PC, PC's beef with Vicky is not my business at all. And I don't want to get involved in that. I don't want to take sides. So I don't know how it started. I don't know how it's ended. And I don't care. I don't want them to fight at all. <laughs> like, you know. Like, I love them both, and yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, oh, fuck you, I'm gonna kick you out just because you said something bad about one of my mods, like, what? Fastest route despite heavier than It's a very safe, clean. Continue straight onto Mackenzie Avenue. You know what, Chantal, a, a word about the GPS thing. So you're worried about people doxing you. Yet you're not discreet about where you're going, what you're doing. You drive around, you show landmarks, stores, things like that. People can pretty much pinpoint where you are because you're not discreet. So there you are saying, I don't want anybody knowing where I'm going to live. Well, allegedly, pictures have already been circulated around of the new place. I don't know if that's actual pictures. I'm just saying those are the pictures, but it doesn't matter because once you get to the new place, what's going to happen? You're going to be streaming inside the house. You're going to be streaming outside the house. You'll be driving around town. People are going to figure out where you are pretty quickly. Ottawa Regional Road 44. Country, you know? In 500 meters, turn right onto Rideau. It's so annoying. Yes, it's annoying. <laughs> Jeez. Are we eating again? They're chippy donuts, plain cheeseburgers. What? So basically, what is this stream, Chantal? You're driving around and just taking little stops here and there and stopping for Starbucks and food every time you stop? What are you having for your birthday dinner, Lambo? I forgot about your birthday. I went and had a party. He was flirting, falafel flirting. Yum. You're scared, almost fears. Almost fears. Mm. 
Yeah. I don't want to see her eat. Well, I'm still here. I can go get more. You don't need any more. All right. Imagine I went back in. Okay, come mm -hmm. on. Stop the eating mm -hmm. on camera. If she stops again and eats. Yeah, I A warning light came on on my computer. My car computer it scared the fuck out of me. Like, I'm gonna get the Kia all fixed up too. And you know what, Chantal? You should have done that before you got the new phone. I'm sure a thousand dollars spent on your car would have been better spent than buying another freaking phone. And we are gonna make a plan, budget, moving budget. What I need to do, what I need to pay, everything else. Maybe I'll bring that ratty chair just so they have something to keep scratching. Hey, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Consolidation. I didn't think you were a sofa breaking fat. I didn't think you were sofa breaking fat. <laughs> I'm going to have to be really on my game with the cats, guys. Like, I'm going to have to really keep this place super 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 clean and super in good shape as much as I can like I'm gonna have to take care of it you know I've been taking advantage of my home and not taking proper care of it a lot of the time I'm not even your home you don't own it the owner owns that villa and pizza's name is on the lease so don't sit there and say oh I took advantage of my home your name was never on the lease I've just been like really just too fucking depressed and just too lazy and just too uh, self-absorbed, I guess. I don't know. Whatever you want to think, but look at these friggin' squirrels. We'll be able to drive by the condo. <laughs> That's what you think, Stinky Anna. I know you guys think I'm moving close to Natter. You are. But I'm not. Well, you're not moving further away. Are you getting a new TV for your new place? <laughs> a spray on furniture? Ooh. Really, Brooke? I have to look into that. Start doing things out of chaos. Everything has to be planned. I'm tired. I want a nap. Okay, you know what? She's getting rather boring. So let's go on to the comments because they're actually more interesting than her live stream, is, aren't they? Uh, Katz says, funny how she always goes from too hot to do anything in August to too cold to do anything in September. It's always the conditions. It's never her being just a big sack of misery. This move is the same thing. Everything will be totally different at another place, guys. Well, you know what? I want to take everybody back to when she moved into the villa. When she moved in, she was talking about how the villa, there was a pool that she could use. There was, I believe, a hot tub. There was a gym. So... Chantal had everything she needed to get in shape and to get her life together. And she never took advantage of those things, just the fact that she had access to those things. And I've been saying for the longest, if she wants to go on walks and the weather might be a problem, she could always buy a treadmill and walk at home in the comfort of her own home, but she never did that. And a, and a treadmill doesn't cost that much like a couple hundred dollars and you can walk whenever you want. As long as you want, when you're done, you can just go straight to bed. Never spent the money on it. 
Uh, Summer Flower says, how does someone who literally has no responsibility, i.e. paying a mortgage, raising kids, working nine to five, et cetera, have the gall to complain so much every day about all their stress? Her entire life is sleep, eat, get lit, and complain relentlessly. If she stopped whining about packing up her place and actually did it, she'd be done by now. They barely have any furniture for crying out loud, and she's acting like she has to pack up a mansion or something. Right, she's not taking the big stuff with her. It's just a bunch of little stuff. So it shouldn't take that long. I mean, here she is complaining about moving, but what is she doing, y'all? She's doing endless live streams, like six to 10 hours of live streams. She can't sacrifice one or two hours a day to pack up some stuff and then live stream after. I think she could do that. Adina B says, not packing up the villa, check. Buying fast food, check. Nothing has changed and will never change. Love that for you. Get Chantal, if you're over there tight for money, you shouldn't be buying fast food. That's just ridiculous. It, it's absolutely ridiculous to sit there and sell your TV and then turn around and spend $1,000 on a new phone. I don't get you. I don't understand. Jam 91 Production says everything seems stressful when you're not used to doing crap. Right. She's, she's used to a life of nothing, and here she is having to finally work and do something. And I am so stressed out. I'm so tired. <laughs> Olivia says, I prefer watching you through reaction channels because they cut out the boring stuff and make it entertaining. Also, why do you watch me if you hate me? Hmm. Why do you watch Natter and Didi? Good question. Excellent question. She hates Natter. She hates Didi, allegedly, but yet she watches them. So why do you hate watch those two, Chantal? Build Me Up Beezer Cup says, Chantal, the woman who will buy new clothes instead of washing her dirty clothing, is now moving to avoid dealing with the mess in her current home. The landlord of that new fully furnished property is in for a world of crap, literally. Yeah, I feel bad for whoever rented to her. They have no idea what's going to happen. I, I feel bad for them. I don't know who these people are, but when you're someone and you buy a home, you know, you're doing it because you're wanting to get people to rent the place and you make some money. But it always sucks if you are someone you you spend a good chunk of time earning the money to buy a place and then you get destructive tenants like Chantal going in there and screwing up your property and then by the time you find out you've got thousands of dollars in damages it's really not fair for people to go in and destroy somebody else's stuff hey it's d says i stand by my original theory that this move to a new and improved fully furnished villa if it's real is a temporary situation. Someone is away for the winter and offered this solution to avert a homelessness situation after their eviction. That person will really regret this decision. Look, I don't know who rented to her. I don't know how or why. I think someone in Chantal's family stepped up and made it happen because I'm sure somebody else around her close that does not want Chantal in their home thought to themselves, you know what, which is worse, setting her up in this property and she stays there or if she doesn't have a place to go, she's going to have to come live with me and I don't want that. So it might be a temporary thing. It may not be. We'll see. Kathy L says, yep, moving is stressful when you prefer to bees and eat instead of using those boxes to pack. Yeah, when, when you're used to doing nothing for two years or more, and then you have to get your butt up and actually do something, yeah, it is stressful. <laughs> uh, Lone Wolf says she's clearly up to something shady, like seeing Natter again. She's always out in her car and vague AF about why and where she's off to next. I also saw that she only eats her meals and drinks her coffee on live stream so she can claim the expenses for tax. Imagine being out gallivanting around when you're moving soon. Most people 
would be home frantically cleaning and packing. Right. If you're if you're ready to move, your your focus is on what you can do to clean up your home and to pack things up and make it sure it's packed correctly, not sound tall. And as far as her claiming stuff like food and stuff on her taxes, that is only effective when you pay your taxes. When you don't pay them, you can't really claim anything if you've got back taxes coming. Baby Got Back says, that's a shame that your car is falling apart due to your fast food runs 30 times a day and all that back and forth driving you did just to make someone jealous who honestly doesn't care about what or who you do. Otherwise, your car would be fine because you work, if you can call it work, pulling the bare minimum doing live streams all day at home. God is throwing red blankets at you because the tiny red flags waving all over the darn place go unnoticed by you. We should be throwing life-size no-nuts natter cutouts because you'll jump all over that. <laughs> yeah, like Chantal crossed over from she need, from needing red flags to actual blankets, and she's still not seeing them. Cameo Rose says, I'm so glad you figured out the slimming filters. Good job on losing 200 pounds overnight, Will. They only disappear on camera. When the camera's turned off, they're still there. Uh, Pretty Green Eyes says, Chantal, I agree with you on the stream sniping, but people watch the reaction channels because as Yaba put perfectly this morning, they enjoy the person's personality and their thoughts on the videos you put out. People are watching them because not being funny, but you don't do anything. Every day is the same. Starbucks, routine and edibles, and the same thing being said over and over. It's boring. Please do something with your channel. There are a ton of reaction channels now, and you're always going hard for FFG. She cared about you in the beginning and warned you with facts about Green Pea, but you turned around and shot in her from the, from the greatest height. So I don't blame her for turning on you. I do the same. But it's your loss because she was actually a very sweet person. Please leave her alone and turn your attention to someone else. She has lost both her dogs within a month. Imagine losing BBJ and Sam within a month, both your babies. Give her a break, please. She has a lot of followers and will do your channel no good coming after her right now for the same things a ton of other people say. And you wonder why you get so much hate. Please do something else other than beezing smoking edibles and moaning or your new place will not last long these people are keeping you oh so sorry doggone it are are keeping you relevant why can you not see that relevancy equals money look at the bigger picture that was a long comment but a good comment and i agree with a lot of it and as far as the stream sniping pretty green eyes I've said this already, if Chantal did not dirty delete half of the stuff she does, the stuff that's interesting, the stuff that we can actually react to and we're not struggling to say something interesting, maybe the reaction channels would not snipe her. But if there's anything interesting, we almost have to or hit record really quick because she will go off and she'll rage and she'll vent. She's doing something other than being stoned and stupid. And you got to capture it when it's there because after she's done, it's gone. So if she would just leave the streams up, maybe we might wait our turn, you know? Maybe we might just do that. Saggy Brain says, I feel sorry for your new landlord. No doubt there will be a bug infestation due to your lack of cleaning. For the landlord's sake, I hope that's not the case because that is so not fair to do that to somebody who worked hard and paid for a property. And all they want is for whoever moves in to respect the fact that it's their property. And they did work hard to buy it and not trash it. But Chantal's a messy, sloppy person. I, 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 my, uh, I'm cringing thinking about the mess she's going to cause in that place. Oh, here we go. Love and Peace says, reaction channels don't charge to tell others your opinions in chat. That's another thing, Chantal. 
we don't put our conversation behind a paywall, you do. Anybody can come in as long as they're not acting the fool, they can say what they want. You limit the amount of people that talk to you. You want everyone to pay. You're not gonna talk to people for free. To you, that's a horrible concept. What? Talk to people for free? Oh, I can't do that. I can't talk to people for free. No, no, they, they, they've got to pay. I'm so valuable, people have to hear my opinions and pay for it. You know, Chantal, you value yourself too much in ways that you are worthless. Conversation with you is not worth $5. That's my opinion. Uh, Mad Pooper says, why does she think she'll suddenly be able to take care of her new place? The villa was a nice place when she moved in. Yeah, it was. It's not now. Uh, Jessica Edmond says, attention reaction channels. Please add the, her bird noises to your intros. <laughs> I'm going to have to go look for these bird noises. I think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandy Wine says, holy hell, your face has grown about 20 times its normal size since I last clicked on a video of yours. Yeah, she's getting much bigger. And the bigger she gets, the more she seeks out those powerful filters. Maybe that's why she got the new phone, because her current phone, the filters were glitching out. And she didn't like that. Uh, stay mad says Chantal, I love you, but your filters are trying to blur the bushes behind you. <laughs> oh, they're that powerful. They can blur out the bushes. Uh, Kimmy case, if that new place, everyone is posting about that furniture will not hold you. It has floorboards. OMG, you're going to wreck it. Imagine all your piss and crap on that little couch. It has three floors four bedrooms. Hopefully that isn't it. I hope that Chantal takes care of the place out of respect for those who bought it. I, I really, really do. It's not nice, like I said, to wreck somebody else's property. Uh, Kim P says, do you ever stop eating? No, <laughs> no, she doesn't. She goes hard with trying to keep those feeders happy. Let's see. Uh, Brooke says, if you're still seeing Natter, you shouldn't move. What's the point of starting a new chapter if you're doing the same thing? It's so obvious. You're both MIA. So I haven't checked on Natter, his channel, but he's missing right now. And you have to wonder why. Like, what's going on with him that he's missing? Uh, Veronica Max says, Hey, foodie beauty. You said you can't say much about your so-called new place, but you slipped up big time. And you said, if you stream in the kitchen, it would give you away. People would know pretty much where you're at. I'm no detective, but I remember when you went to Carly Steele's place and did a mukbang with her and Josh. I can't remember where her place is, but you can most definitely see her kitchen in that video and others on her channel as well. So haha, ha, that is why it's furnished. She's probably is going somewhere warm for the winter with a new hubby Josh and felt sorry for you and Pete since it's pretty much out there that you've been evicted from your so-called not luxury villa. I can be wrong, but I honestly think it might be true. We even said that you have hookups and you're helping someone out. Perhaps it's Carly helping you out. And if she is, she's going to regret it. There's no way in hell that you won't trash their place like you have at the villa. You'll be needing to find another place once she throws your butt out. I love that for you. If anyone else uh, wants to see if this could be very possibility, check out the videos. I don't know. I, I don't know if she's moving, uh, staying at Carly's place. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's one of those wait and see things.
and see. So that's it for this React video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I think she's doing an, another live stream right now. If so, I will cover it once the chat has processed. Thank you all for spending time with me tonight. I know that I've thrown a lot at you guys today. I mean, I just went from doing nothing yesterday to just banging them out today, but I'm just trying to stay caught up. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a wonderful night and please take care. Bye-bye.